Hello and welcome to this ECHO Summit on Fatigue, Causes and Management. It's a pleasure to uh, give you the introduction to fatigue and EDS and HSD and my name is Dr. Alan Hakeem. Uh, my affiliations and declarations are here. I'm a consultant rheumatologist and physician based in London and adjunct associate professor in medicine at Penn State in the USA. And I'm the chief medical officer and the director of research and director of education at the Earlers Danlos Society. I'm a member of the steering committee and the chair of the HEDS HSD working group at the International Consortium in the EDSs and HSDs. And I'm a medical advisor to several other charities in the UK, including the HMSA, EDS UK and SEDS Connective. I'm also the lead for EDS Echo at the Others Down Society, and it's an absolute pleasure to bring this particular topic to you today with some amazing speakers. So it won't be a surprise, I think, to anybody in our audience today that fatigue is one of the most common and disabling symptoms and concerns that most of our patients have. It sits way up there alongside chronic widespread pain. Just orientating you around this particular slide, and some of you may have seen this before in other contexts, here we've got data that we collected from the Global Registry, which now has over 15,000 participants in it from around the world. And you can see over on the right hand side, the distribution of people by their diagnosis. So nearly a thousand people with HSD, uh, over eight and a half thousand with hypermobile EDS, uh, nearly 400 with classical EDS and over 100 with vascular EDS. And each of these bars is color coded so that HSD is purple, HEDS is yellow, classical EDS is blue and vascular EDS is red. Now, we do have some data on some of the rarer types, um, but really these four particular groups cluster together to demonstrate very nice um, uh, uh, set of data that shows that really across HSD and EDS, lots of our patients experience a number of different symptoms, different comorbidities. But if we look over at fatigue, you'll see that it's reported in a considerable proportion of people uh, with HSD, hypermobile EDS, classical EDS, and vascular EDS. So what do we mean when we talk about fatigue, and in particular, chronic fatigue? Uh, we're talking about a set of symptoms uh, and an impact of those symptoms on somebody's life that's been going on for more than six months. That gives it the chronic nature as opposed to an acute nature. And we talk about severity that is either repeatedly or persistently affecting somebody's physical and or their mental function. And if you look at things like word clouds for fatigue, I've pulled up one here, which uh, came from Stussman et al, uh, who published um, a word cloud uh, on an article uh, around MECFS. You can see the kinds of symptoms and concerns that people with chronic fatigue um, express. The key one here right in the center is exhaustion. And this is an important word, which I will pick up again in a moment. But there's this difficulty thinking clearly, muscle aches and pains, difficulty finding words, headache, migraine, and memory problems. Um, alongside the physical side of things, there are the emotional or the psychological aspects to this. Uh, there are also then a whole host of different types of symptoms that are clustering around a number of different conditions that we're going to talk about in detail today. So let's have a think about how we um, talk about sort of energy levels and fatigue. In this particular diagram, what I'm trying to demonstrate for you here on the um, y-axis here is the level of activity or functioning based on somebody's energy levels. And on the x-axis here, maybe time, it could be across a day, it could be across a week, it might be across a month, it doesn't really matter. What we're looking at here in this first example is somebody who really just has a normal lifestyle, who isn't fatigued, doesn't have chronic fatigue, and their activity and their energy levels are right up here. And these would be things like having the normal capacity to uh, enjoy a social life, uh, uh, go out to work with any complications, or maybe be studying, uh, looking after the family, etc., uh, doing physical activity. So they have their own energy limits, and these are different for different people. And the idea here is that we plot over time what's happening to them from their perception over their energy levels, and sometimes they go a little bit above their normal energy limits, and sometimes they drop 
a little bit below. And say, for example, um, they have a particular uh, uh, activity, uh, which was maybe a little bit too much for them. They might then find themselves somewhat tired after that. So they would describe themselves as worn out or tired. Now, they might in normal language use the word I'm exhausted, but that doesn't really uh, mean what we mean when we talk about exhaustion in the context of chronic fatigue. So let's take somebody who doesn't have those energy levels, those energy limits, who is fatigued. They might sit around about here in this activity uh, profile. So maybe they're still able to do a number of the things I described, but perhaps their energy levels and their capacity to do them are just not as much as they would be for somebody in the normal general population. So they're still looking after family. They're still um, getting work done. Um, they still have activities in their life, but um, these are just that little bit harder because their energy limits are just lower. And so they have to compensate. And so you might plot somebody's uh, energy levels over time and uh, consider what's happening to them. And you can see that uh, some of the time uh, the person is working within their energy limits. They are maybe pacing in this scenario, um, but they may just overwork uh, above their normal limits. And this could just be with normal activities. It might just be a much, much busier day at work. It might be a challenge in the family setting. It could be anything that otherwise would be considered perhaps normal for healthy people, but it's just too much for this person. And the risk then is that they uh, drop down and become exhausted by uh, this uh, kind of activity for a period of time before they then recover back up and pace. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, that somebody needs to have done a lot of activity to drop into those exhaustion levels. And I'll show that in the next energy level below. So let's take somebody who is now really profoundly fatigued, who has, um, sorry, uh, much, much lower energy limits than you would really expect of anybody in the general population. And here we are uh, in really mar quite marked severe fatigue. Again, we can see how this is affecting them and how they are managing within those energy limits by plotting out how they feel over time. And here's an example um, of the fact that people, even with this level of fatigue, not doing anything above their normal energy li uh, limits can just dip down and lose their energy for some time before they then come back up and find uh, their limits and are able to pace and maybe even do a little bit more, but might then dip down again. And here we're talking about people literally crashed out. And so what we have here is a model that's trying to demonstrate moderate and severe fatigue by looking at energy levels, the limits that people have in their capacity to do things, the descriptions, if you like, of what happens when they really plummet to their to below their normal energy levels and the kinds of activities that we might all um, take for granted, just either being much, much harder to do or indeed impossible to do. So you're going to hear from a number of expert healthcare professionals, and you're also going to hear uh, a couple of uh, absolutely wonderful uh, patient experiences presented to you today um, that are going to reflect a number of the areas of fatigue um, that we recognize um, as issues in EDS and HSD. But the first thing that I want to flag on this particular slide is that we have to remember that fatigue is a feature of many conditions, including conditions such as cancer, heart disease, lung disease. So we must never just assume that someone with EDS or HSD who is fatigued has fatigue because of their EDS or HSD or the comorbidities that we're going to talk about. It's always really important if the fatigue is either changing for the worse or comes on for the new, that there is a detailed history taken, a detailed assessment as to why that fatigue might be there. And it would be inappropriate of the clinician to assume from the outset without that proper detailed history uh, and assessment that the fatigue is simply due to some cause related to the EDS or HSD. But we're gonna focus over uh, the course of today on uh, areas that we absolutely recognize are causes of fatigue. Uh, and these are going to include uh, sleep, uh, uh, disturbance and apnea, uh, headache, chronic pain, dysautonomia, uh, endocrine and hematological problems, 
inflammation, uh, which um, is a considerable cause for energy drains, uh, nutrient deficiencies, uh, GI dysfunction and GU dysfunction, and then uh, mental health and neurodivergence. And you'll hear from different clinicians the different perspectives on this. And I think this also draws um, another important point out. It can be very, very difficult uh, for um, patients with fatigue to work out what is causing their fatigue and how that might be treated. But even on a day-to-day -day basis, when somebody has a number of these different issues that I've just described, which one or which set of them are driving the fatigue that day? Because it can fluctuate. And so one is always looking for the different things that they have in um, their toolbox to be able to manage these different conditions to try and support themselves, both with the symptoms from the condition itself, um, but also uh, manage the fatigue. The other point about this then is that no one physician, clinician, is actually um, capable of managing all of these different uh, conditions. Uh, they may be aware of them if they are a generalist, such as a primary care clinician or a general practitioner or a physician like myself. Um, but you need the expertise of other people to be able to support the management um, of these conditions and the fatigue they're in. And every single one of the clinicians that's going to be talking to you today in the different presentations will be recognizing that fatigue is a significant concern in the areas that they're going to be discussing. So as we walk through the program today, uh, you will hear from uh, our experts who will discuss uh, areas of cause um, of um, fatigue, uh, thinking about the effect that this has uh, on people with EDS and HSD, uh, and on the treatments uh, that there are um, to uh, influence this. Uh, I truly hope that you find this uh, a very rewarding uh, and probably also uh, validating day. Uh, and I thank all of our expert uh, speakers um, for um, their commitment to this and their support for what I believe is a really important subject that is often over missed. Fatigue, uh, causes and management. Thank you for listening.